What's up guys, Eric here with Team Eccentric and I am uh, doing a channel update as well as my first deck profile in a long time. Um, the channel update, uh, essentially, I know I haven't posted in quite some time, I essentially quit the game for a while um, with, the, uh, with the announcement of Lynx. Um, I didn't originally uh, care for the idea of them. Um, I felt as if uh, the, you know the mechanic was too convoluted and there was a lot going on and I just didn't care for it and on top of that um, uh, anybody who knows me personally well enough uh, knows that I am a very avid skateboarder and skateboarding is kind of like my life's passion and um, you know it kind of trumps Yu-Gi-Oh you know skateboarding before Yu-Gi-Oh and um, <clears throat> well uh, basically I wanted to kind of focus my summer around my skateboarding and uh, kind of you know focus on, uh, refocus myself around that but um, within you know within the past few weeks I've kind of realized that you know that doesn't mean I have to necessarily quit Yu-Gi-Oh um, on top of the fact that I tried out Link Monsters and I actually don't mind them so much they're not so bad um, it's just a matter of uh, kind of adjusting to them um, just like with every mechanic uh, you know when Synchros came out people thought those sucked when Exceeds came out people thought those sucked um, then Pendulums came out and then they are kind of busted and then uh, now Link Monsters come out and honestly Link Monsters do something to the game that all the other mechanics that came out don't they actually restrict the game a little they kind of slow the pace down um, and that's part of the reason why um, you know I decided to just you know cave in and test it out and see how they worked um, and honestly they're not so bad so um I decided to uh, jump back into the game um, Team Eccentric will be uh, posting videos again uh, I will have other people on the channel um, it's not just gonna be me again you know, I know Zoe's getting back into the game as well um, uh, Connor was one of the people who kind of kept me in the loop uh, with the game um, TJ's back in uh, there's gonna be a lot of people and this time we will try and make sure that this channel is a little bit more stable with its content and uh, produces a little bit better quality content um, so that will be a thing um, and on top of that, uh, eventually I do want to host some kind of a, like a, a team eccentric based, uh, tournament just to kind of see like where decks stand and who, you know what I mean? Uh, just to kind of see where, uh, where the skill set is, uh, amongst all the players. So, um, that's that. We also got some new players on the team. Um, you know, just, you know, starting up, we kind of need some new fresh faces, and, you know, some other interpretations of the, of the game. So, um, that being said... Uh, let's get right into the deck profile. Like I said, guys, I'm bringing you my first deck profile since uh, last year. Um, I did quit the game for a while, both because of the announcement of Link Monsters and as well as the fact that um, you know this was kind of interrupting my actual like real life passion, which is skateboarding. Um, any of you who know me personally, or any of you who have heard of me, know that skateboarding is kind of like my my go-to that's like the everything I live for so Yu-Gi-Oh was kind of getting in the way of that so I had to cut it out for a while at least but um we're back with Team Eccentric and um this time we're not going to be as competitive we're just going to kind of play decks we like and um kind of just show you things um that we think about the game you know our interpretations of the game rather than um you know trying to focus so much on the competitive scene um you know there you know we'll still I'll still be applying my competitive mindset to a lot of the videos, but um, generally speaking, um, it's not going to be as, um, com you know, just generally competitive. But uh, without further ado, guys, let's get right into the profile. Let's start it off. Uh, no more beating around the bush or wasting time. So uh, we're going to start it off with the Mermail component of the deck. We are playing Triple Mermail Abyss Megalo. Uh, this is your OTK card. Um, without this guy, the deck wouldn't OTK nearly as much as it does. Now this card is just too good. So we're playing three of those. We're playing um, Triple Mermail Abyss Tius. Uh, Mermail Abyss Tius is, in my opinion, probably one of the better combo-based Mermails. Um, it just, uh, you know, drawing this into Dragoons just sets up plays for days. So next, we're getting into the one of Mermails. We're playing one of his lead, one of his pike, one of his mander, and one of his gun. Now this lineup, in my personal opinion, is actually pretty decent right now. Um, you know, I know lead is kind of bricky, and uh, you know, you don't want to see it you know all the time but the reason why I play it is because uh, going first I like to take cards out of my opponent's hands so that uh, I make them advantage 
So a lead in my personal opinion is really good. And then Mander, I have some shenanigans in the extra deck for, and then these are kind of self-explanatory and somewhat obligatory in this deck. So uh, that's it for the Mermaid component. Now we're getting into the Atlanteans. Triple Prince, as always, you always play Triple Prince. If you are not playing Triple Prince, you do not know how to play Mermails. Um, after that, we're playing Double Dragoons, Double Marksmen, and Double Heavy Infantry. That is kind of the standard lineup in my personal opinion. A lot of people drop Marksmen to one, um, which, you know, I see why, but I disagree with firmly because um, Marksmen allows you to get into your other Atlanteans uh, if the need were ever there. So if you can manage to do some battle damage with Marksmen, you can special summon your Prince if you didn't see it, and then uh, attack with the Prince, and then go off with more combos. So that is it for the Atlantean lineup. Now for the other monsters, we're playing uh, Triple uh, Game of Seal. No need to say why, it's just really, really good. Um, after that, one uh, Mulan, one Diva. Then for the non-water monsters, we're playing Double Gofu, one Ghost Ogre, and one Maxi. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to play three Gofu, particularly because I feel as if, uh, with this deck, you just want to draw water monsters. So, um, you know, drawing multiples of Gofu just does not help your situation. It's just not that good, so... Uh, now we're getting into the spells. We're playing Double Moray. Um, Moray of Greed would be good at 3 in my personal opinion. I just don't have the room for it. Um, and on top of that, uh, I feel like honestly the deck is really consistent right now, so I'm just playing Moray at 2. I'm playing Double Instant Fusion. I am playing Theseus and Rare Fish in the extra deck, so Double Instant Fusion is kind of a must in my personal opinion. After that, uh, Double Forbidden Chalice. Now, I know that um, Zodiacs got hit, and that's the main reason that I was playing the Chalice in the main deck, but honestly, this card kind of does help in other situations. Um, since, uh, you know, decks like Blue Eyes and things like that, like to set up Cyber Dragon Infinity, or, or even, um, you know, Dragon, but you know, you can kind of like bait out your opponent's Dragon Buster with this. Um, honestly, Chalice is just really good if you're going second, which this deck, in my personal opinion, actually capitalizes on going second. Um, you know, this deck still does manage to break some boards. So next, uh, we're playing Double Desires. Now, I used to disagree with this card in this deck so much. I used to hate this card in this deck. Um, but you just do all your searches first and then activate this, which I know is always the theory, but... You know, this deck is somewhat resource intensive, so um, if I had to make a change to the deck, um, I would play Raigeki over this and then the third Moray over this. However, I don't own the Raigeki, so I wouldn't, you know, I don't know what else to uh, throw into the deck. So that's it for the two of spells. Now for the one ofs, we're playing one uh, Biscale the Mizuchi, one one for one, one Soul Charge, and one Upstart Goblin. Like I said, I don't own Raigeki right now. Um, when I did essentially quit the game for a while, uh, I sold a lot of my cards, and Raigeki's were uh, some of those cards. So now, <clears throat> going into the extra deck, um, we are playing two Link Monsters in the forms of Decode Talker and Proxy Dragon. Now, um, you don't really want to play too many Link Monsters. I know that uh, Miss Starboy comes out very, very soon, so uh, what I will be doing is I'll be cutting both of these for two Miss Starboy. Um, however, right now, these are just kind of what I play. After that, we are playing some Exceeds in the forms of True King of All Calamities and um, number 23, Lancelot, Dark Knight of the Underworld. Now these are your Mander uh, plays. This is why Mander is in the deck. Also, you can always make this off of a Mulan and a Gamma Seal if you are able to summon a Gamma Seal to your field. So, you know, this could be also good in late game um, to kind of, um, you know, mitigate your opponent's plays and just kind of like, you know, solidify the fact that you won the game. After that, one Abyss Gaios and one Draco Sack. Now, Draco Sack is actually a combo maker in my personal opinion because not only does it make tokens which you can utilize for your link materials, but on top of that, uh, those tokens are level three. So if you have the chance to make a Trish, or you can, um, you know, at the same time make your Sapphire Mode Omega using Instant Fusion with uh, Sea Monster Theseus, and it gets you the last water you need in the graveyard for Mooling Glaze. So this card is honestly such a combo maker, and that's why I actually I've, I've decided that I'm going to keep this card in this deck uh, for as long as I play this deck. This card is just too good. And then for the rank fours, I only play two and they're the same card, um, Double Abyss Dweller. I don't play any of the other water rank fours, not because they're any good or anything, um, or not because they're bad rather, um, but just because uh, I feel like right now, um, you know, it's really kind of hard to judge, um, you know, what extra deck cards to play, especially with the addition of like monsters to the extra deck. So I just um, uh, kind of defaulted to two dwellers. 
After that, Synchros, Trishula, Saffron Little Omega, Brito, Herald of Arclight, and Tatsunoko. Um, this is kind of my standard lineup that I played before I quit. Um, Saffron Little Omega is the only card that's really different, uh, but what's, what's good about it is uh, both of these uh, take cards out of your opponent's hand, which is essentially what I'm trying to do turn one if I'm going first. And then obviously, you know, this bridges your way into all these and Herald of Arclight, Brio, then no, no need for any more explanation. Um, and then for the last two cards in the extra deck, I'm playing one Sea Monster of Theseus and one Rare Fish. Um, honestly, Rare Fish is sort of subpar. It only comes up when uh, when I'm either trying to make a big Synchro play or trying to make a rank four, which would just be Abyss Dweller. Um, and then Sea Monster of Theseus, honestly, is actually really good in this deck. I really like Sea Monster of Theseus because um, if I have let's say for example uh, a marksman on the field or something of that nature I can instant fusion um, and then make uh, Cypher Mode Omega or you know there's a lot of plays that can be done with uh, Theseus so um, that is it for my Mermo deck profile guys um, like I said the team uh, team eccentric is essentially back uh, we're kind of working our way back up to the uh, to the way we were so you know this is our first uh, legitimate video but um, you know look, uh, tell us what you think in the comment section below let me know what you think of this deck profile um, if there's anything I can do to it to kind of make it uh, more accommodated to our current um, uh, for format even though I know that our current format has just literally recently changed so it's kind of hard to judge um, but that's part of the reason why I still play mermails is because um, mermails are one of those decks you can always go back to in between formats and just kind of like judge and test so uh, as always guys Eric here with Team Eccentric and I am signing out Rate and subscribe, leave your comments and ideas in the comment section below, and don't hesitate to give us respectful suggestions on content you want to see. Eric on behalf of the team saying take care and Team Eccentric out.